Hi, welcome to the Noise Path. In this episode, we're going to take a look at this interesting resistor box. This is from Ohmsor's Model OS270, and essentially it's a decade resistor box, but it's electronically controllable. The terminals are here at the bottom, at the very, very bottom. I'll show you that in a second. I picked this up from eBay recently. It had a broken battery compartment, so it's powered with these cables over here. It does actually turn on, which I can do like this. And if I press this button, then we can adjust the resistors. And it goes with a certain 1% resistor standards. It's got some interesting features which we can take a look at. But there's a few minor repairs I think we need to do to it. I don't know if you can tell on the screen or not, but there are several lines of these LCD that are missing. So it's hopefully just a matter of opening it, cleaning it, and readjusting it, and getting the zebra strips in the right places. So we'll see what happens when we open it. I also want to know what architecture they use, what kind of resistor standards they use. It sounds like there's a whole bunch of relays inside that switch between them. They could resistors to adjust the resistors you're looking for. It's a handy little tool there. So let's take it one step at a time. And here's what's inside, really easy to open and very old school. It's in fact using a microchip PIC 16F877 microcontroller with a dip socket here. I remember using those when I was in university. It's a pretty old part, but it works for something like this. It's a programming port over here and all the keypad is on the other side and the LCD screen is on the other side. So we have to open this to access that. Now on this side, we see a grid of relays and the drivers for the relays I see is on the side there. Now this is obviously about switching the decade resistor boxes. And on the other side must be all of the resistors. So if you remove these screws, we should be able to see what kind of resistors they're using. And this is just simply where the battery compartment connection goes and the battery compartment is a piece of plastic that sits in there. This is a piece of plastic and has a few broken parts. So I have to fix that with epoxy in a moment. So one thing at a time, I think just looking at the LCD screen before we open this, if you can get rid of those lines, that already would be pretty good. Let's start from there. So on the other side, I did find an entire LCD module that can be driven directly from this, looks like a quasi-parallel interface. So this connector was not a programming interface, I was mistaken. It has holes on this side, and this thing pokes through here in order to reach the connector on that side. An unusual way of doing that, but I think I've seen that before. So now the next step is to take this apart and move it around, clean it up. And here is our LCD screen taken apart. Now luckily, because it comes out completely, I can attach it to the unit and keep trying it. It's not an exact science moving this around and cleaning it. We just have to do it until all the lines finally disappear. Well, I went ahead and assembled and disassembled this thing maybe a dozen times and seriously began to question the meaning of life because every time a new line was missing and eventually I gave up and I just went ahead and I bought a replacement for $7 from eBay, which is what I should have done from the beginning. Now, interestingly enough, this particular unit actually does have a backlight in it, but there's nothing in the firmware of this instrument that supports that. So I went ahead and I removed the resistor over here, which is responsible for the backlight because it was drawing 150 milliamp and it would drain the batteries very quickly. We could put a much larger resistor in here just for a very dim backlight. That is something I might try, but at least we can put this back and hopefully this is still exactly the same thing because this is revision C and the old one was revision B, but I can't really tell much of a difference between them. So hopefully this is okay. And on the other side of these latching relays, we're going to find a whole bunch of resistors. Everything is surface mount of different values. So the architecture is really not that complicated. You're just switching in and out various resistors and I think even combinations of them in series and in parallel to produce a wide range of resistors, just like any decade resistor box would be able to do. Now you do also have to be careful because there's of course some power limitations of how much you can put through these resistors. Some of them are larger, the smaller ones, but some of them are certainly going to be burning out if you put too much and I don't see any damage on this so I think this has been reasonably well handled and calibration is most likely just a correction factor being entered into the display so I'm very curious measuring some of these on an eight and a half digit meter which is calibrated and see how accurate some of these components are it's a very simple thing but having it electronically selectable certainly is much more convenient so the data sheet and the manual of this instrument is available online and it looks like it has a list price of about $1,500. So now that we have fixed it, I think that eBay was a reasonably good deal. We saw all those surface mount resistors in the back of that PCB, basically in a decade configuration, with the many, many of them, and they were rated at one watt, and we can see that if you put more than one watt in here, of course you're going to damage those resistors. But it does have a nice feature where you can limit the current going through the device, and I think they're just using the microprocessor, the PIC that's inside of it. It does have a built-in ADC, just monitoring the amount of 
current and voltage appearing and because it knows the settings, it can figure out if you're exceeding one watt and it can disconnect the resistor and protect the device. It's pretty handy because a manual decade resistor will obviously be not as fast because you'd have to do it yourself and watch out for it. So this is definitely a nice feature it has. And it does have this little keypad that can enter all kind of resistor values in there and it will figure out the relay configuration to give you the resistor that you want. It does seem to have, there are two models, OS260 and OS270. 270 is the one that I have here, and it can be set from almost zero to 1.5 mega ohm. The OS260 can go to a higher resistor, but the resolution is 10 times less. So this is 0.1 ohm, this is 0.01 ohm. So I think I kind of prefer this because 1.5 mega ohm is a pretty large resistor anyway. Now in terms of accuracy, for resistors less than 1000 ohm, it's plus or minus 0.1 ohm. And for resistors above 1000 ohm, it's plus or minus 0.01%. It's still pretty good. And it can be calibrated by simply connecting it to a high resolution meter, entering some values. And we're gonna try this just so we can calibrate it to the best we can. The rest of it is pretty straightforward, so now I'm eager to turn it on and try it out. The instrument itself doesn't have a Kelvin connection. It only has a banana plug in the front. So I have created a simple Kelvin connector by bringing two wires to each of these and then being able to do four wire measurement. This is a Keithley 2002. It's an eight and a half digit multimeter. So we should have no problem calibrating and measuring it. So right now if I turn this on, we are in open. So let's try something like that. that is a thousand ohm. Look at that, that's pretty close. It's very close to a thousand ohm already. I still want to calibrate it. Let's try 10,000 ohm. 10, one, two, three, enter. And let's see if it does 10,000. There it is, 10,000. I'm saying that's pretty good, considering that I handled it and I don't know how old it is and when was the last time something like this was calibrated. We can try 50 ohms. Let's see, does the low value or not. There it is, 50.085. So yeah, let's try putting it through a calibration routine. So evidently you can bring that into calibration by pressing that and then pressing the number three. Okay, so now it's asking me to enter the value that it sees. So it's setting it to some random value, 797838.2, and we have to enter that back uh, based on what I'm reading over here. So this is a pretty boring thing. It's just gonna ask for multiple things. So let me draw it and see if we get any closer. All right, so now after the calibration, let's try a couple of values and then we can put it in an actual setup and see it do something perhaps more interesting. So let's see over here, if I remove the open, so here's a one ohm resistor. It's gonna stabilize, not too bad, 1.03. I think it does, does meet its requirements. So now if I go 1.1, it should go up by 0.1. It's gonna take a moment to stabilize. Let's see if it stops at, it should stop at 1.13 roughly. And it went to 1.14. Yeah, not too bad. It does increase indeed by the amount it is supposed to. So let's try 10 ohms. You should have no problem doing that. There is 10 ohm. Let's try 100. Here's 100. And there it is. Yeah, not too bad. And it should be, if I, it should be able to do 101, for example. And it should go up by exactly one. Let's see if it does. I don't know why it's a little bit slow. Those resistors do certainly need to settle. There is a bit of current in them. There it is, 101. So it does do that. So here is one kilo ohm. And it should be hopefully closer than it was. Yeah, it's a little bit closer. It's actually pretty close. So here's 10,000. You should do that without issues. There's this, 10,000, that's quite good. 100,000. And then we're gonna do one meg. And of course you can do things with very, very good resolution. We saw that, here's 100K. And one, two, three, one, two, three. Here's one meg. One meg, pretty good. I think it's doing a fairly good job. So for example, over here, I should be able to do one, zero, 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 one, zero, zero. There you go, going up by 100 ohms at this point. You should change it towards the end. Yeah, it is counting up, there it is. Yeah, it is doing that, so not too bad. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, dot seven, eight, something like that. There you go, one, two, three, four, five, nine. Yeah, not too bad. So what can we do with something like this? Well, it does have these interesting increments that is built into it. So for example, if I set it to 100 ohms, you can actually set how it chooses the next value so it can be on some kind of a standard, like 1% standard resistor value. So if I go up here, the next value it chooses is 102, and then 105, and then 107, 110, 13, 18, and if I go, Faster and faster, it goes through all kind of different resistor values, and I think you can set that in this menu 
which is the standard values. If I go here, I can tell it which standard values you should select, so 1%, 5%, 10%. So it can be useful to select the resistor that you're looking for in a specific circuit. So let's try it with something like a voltage regulator. So here's a quick experiment setup. What I'm doing here is I have an adjustable voltage regulator here in the middle. It's being fed with 25 volts. Adjustable voltage regulators can be set via a resistive divider and the reference current that comes from the regulator itself. And there's an equation that calculates the output voltage depending on the ratio of those resistors. One resistor is fixed over here, and the other resistor is coming from our decade resistor box, which we can set to whatever value we want with very good resolution. Here, I have set it such that it's producing 12 volts at the output, roughly, the input is 25. So by playing with the value of this resistor, what I'm essentially doing is setting the output voltage of the regulator. There's also a 50 milliamp current going in so that there is some load through the regulator. The regulation characteristics of this depends on this circuit, but the exact voltage that we are setting depends on this. Now this just turned off as you saw, but because these are latching relays, even when it is off, it is still setting the voltage it used to have. You can see that it is sitting at 12 volts, and whether it is on or off, it doesn't make a difference. There are some advantages to that for sure. So for example, I'm at 4 kilo ohm here. If I set it to 100 ohm, which is a much, much smaller value, the output voltage here drops to 1.5 volt. It's still regulating perfectly fine and drawing the 50 milliamp of current. And if I go to a larger value, for example, 5,000, and I click OK, I'm going to go to 14.7 volts in this case. But I can also go through the values of the resistors by slowly adjusting it. And if you look carefully at the very end, you can see that the voltage does get adjusted. So you can adjust this voltage with really, really small steps because we do have this really tight resolution control over here. So this is just one example of what you can do with a substitution resistor to quickly dial in the value you're looking for. And there you have it. I hope you enjoyed this quick video of this interesting instrument. I had never seen one in this form factor before, so it's a cool thing to add to the lab. Really, there is no difference between this and this. This is just an electronic version of this, but fundamentally, it's not relying on any active circuitry, and there is definitely advantages to having just pure resistors that can be automatically selected. If there is a port at the top here, maybe it can actually be remotely programmed as well. I haven't looked into this, but let me know what you think in the comment section. I'll see you next time.